Okay, 3.5, dividing polynomials. So we're going to recap a little bit of long division that you may have learned a little while back. And you have to remember how to do long division. So we're going to take the divisor and the dividend. So what we're doing is taking 267 and dividing it by 4. What does that yield us using long division? Well, 4 goes into 26, 4 goes into 2 0 times, if 4 goes into 26, a total of 6 times. 4 times 6 is 24, and we're going to subtract that, and that will give us 2. Bring down the 7, and, that, and we go 4 into 27 is 6 times again. So we subtract 24, and we have a remainder 3. So let's talk about the pieces again. The 4 is known as the divisor. The 7 is known as the dividend, so the 267 is known as the dividend. The 3 is known as the remainder. So that top number at the very top is known as the quotient. So what we have is we can create a division statement. The division statement says as follows. If we take the dividend divided by the divisor, that will equal the quotient plus the remainder divided by the divisor. So in this case, 267 as such right here, divided by the divisor 4 is equal to the quotient plus the remainder over the divisor, 66 and 3 quarters. Alright, let's look at an example involving polynomials. Determine the quotient of 3x cubed minus 5x squared minus 7x minus 1, and that is divided by x minus 2. So what you have to do is to determine the quotient. What we're going to use is something called long division. We're going to divide x minus 2 into 3x cubed minus 5x squared minus 7x minus 1. Now some of you might be thinking that, oh, I can just divide all of these. No, you can't, folks. That is wrong. Remember that when you divide something with polynomials and there's addition or subtraction, it has to be the entire polynomial or nothing at all. In this case, we do not have an x minus 2 on top that we can cancel. So we have to divide this long term. Here we go. x times what gives you 3x cubed? What do I multiply x by to give us 3x cubed? Well, that's going to be 3x squared. And note where I put that. I put that quotient and line up the degrees. So this is x squared and I line up with the same term. So we line up the common terms. Alright, well when I take 3x squared and I multiply by x, that gives me 3x cubed. Then I take the negative 2 and I multiply by 3x squared and that gives us negative 6x squared. So what we're going to do, just like we did in the last example, we're going to subtract. So we're subtracting 3 minus 3 and that gives us 0. Negative 5 minus negative 6, which is going to be positive x squared. And now folks, we can see that I can now multiply again bring down the next column and we multiply again. x times what gives us x squared? x times x. So I'm going to multiply everything by x and we will get x squared minus 2x. Subtract that and we will have a value of negative 5x negative 5x, we bring down the minus 1, and we're going to try and multiply again. When we stop is when all these numbers have been exhausted, and this degree is higher than the remainder. The remainder and this degree can never ever have the same degree. Okay, the remainder must be have a degree that's lower than the divisor. So, x times what gives us negative 5x, and that is negative 5. Negative 5 times all of these will give us negative 5x 
minus, or sorry, plus 10. Subtract, and we end up getting negative 1 minus 10 is negative 11. So there is a remainder of negative 11. Here is our quotient. The quotient is found at the top, so this is our quotient. It asks you to determine the quotient, and here it is. All right, next example. Example number two. Determine the division statement for 5x minus 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus x to the 5. Oop, there's a lot of work there. Let's go back a little bit and we we'll start that again. Well, it wasn't 5x, it was 5 minus 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus x to the 5. First of all, you should notice that none of these are in the proper order. Okay? And we want to divide it. So to divide it, you have to put the divisor in order. So you have x squared minus x plus 2. Now, the dividend, notice, has a degree of 5. So the degree or of 5 means that there must be 6 terms. 1 for each of the variables. x to the 5 x to the 4, x to the 3, x to the 2, x, and the number constant itself. But we don't have five, six terms here. So we're going to have to have some placeholders in order to be able to divide it. Something to keep note, whether it's the numerator or the denominator, you must remember that you have to place zeros where there could be placeholders. For example, if I didn't have the minus x here, in order to use long division, I would have to put a zero for that x value. Very important to know. All right, so in here at the top, I have negative x to the 5 plus 0x to the 4th as a placeholder, folks, minus 2x cubed plus 3x squared, and then don't forget there's another 0, 0x zero plus 5. And what we're going to do is multiply x squared times what gives us negative x to the 5? Well, folks, that's going to be negative x cubed. When I multiply negative x cubed by everything, I'm going to get negative x to the 5 minus, plus x to the 4 minus 2x cubed. What that will do is once we subtract, you will have negative x to the 4 oops there we go again let's go back a little step minus x to the 4 minus 2x cubed and that's when we took negative x cubed and multiplied by everything here and this is what we get subtract each statement and you end up with negative x to the 4 plus 0x cubed bring down the next line 3x squared and now we're going to multiply. Neg x squared times what gives you negative x to the 4? Just looking at the first terms, folks. That's all we're going to look at. And we get negative x squared. Well, line them up. Remember, we're lining up the variables. So, negative x to the 4 minus, uh, sorry, plus x cubed and then minus 2x squared. Subtract all three parts, and we'll end up with negative x cubed plus 5x squared. And then bring down the next line, 0x, and we start the process over again. And we multiply everything by negative x, here it is, folks, and you end up with 4x squared plus 2x. Bring down the last one, and we're going to continue this on to the next page. All right, so we're going to repeat this whole thing on to the next page. We're going to multiply by plus 4. So let's look at this over again. All right, there it is. I just shrunk it a little bit. So you can see here how this is where we ended up, this is where we ended up, and we're going to add 4, and we're going to multiply everything by 4, and we get this, 
And when we multiply by 4 and subtract, we end up with 6x minus 3. Note that here the degree of this is actually lower than the degree of this, so the degree of the remainder is lower than the degree of the divisor, therefore we can stop. And we write the division statement. This is the division statement. So it's the... Let's look at this. This is the dividend divided by the divisor is equal to the quotient plus the remainder divided by the divisor. All right. Next one. Just a moment. All right, so we're going to look at a version of synthetic division. So we're going to synthetically divide the following polynomial, uh, polynomial, uh, the rational po polynomial, rational function, rational. Sorry, a ratio of polynomial functions. All right, so here it is, and we want to use synthetic division. So synthetic division says we're not going to take the root, folks, like the book does but we're actually going to take the factor. So negative 2 is the factor. So x minus 2 is the factor. We drop the x and we have minus 2. And we're going to drop these variables as well. So we're only looking at the numbers themselves. So it's 3, negative 5, negative 7, and negative 1. If there was, a z if there was something missing, this is a cubic, so there must be four terms. And there are, so we, if something was missing, we put a 0. But I want to explain what happens here. So one more time. The divisor, we drop the x, so I'm going to cover that up. We'll only have minus 2 on the outside. And on the inside, it's going to be all of the coefficients of the x's. Okay? So we're basically dropping the x's. In this case, the bottom, remind you again, it's going to be minus 2. All right. What that will do. So we take that, and now we're going to drop the 3. We multiply these two out, and then we subtract, and we're subtracting, just like we did in long division, we're subtracting this. And we will get a positive 1, multiply again, put the multiplication here, subtract, and you get negative 5, multiply, and subtract, and you get negative 11. So this is synthetic division. This is how you synthetically divide. And finally, this is our final statement. This here, 3 plus 1, this 3 plus 1 minus 5 is going to be your quotient, and this negative 11 is your remainder. Now let's go on to the next video.